Okay, so let's look at uh, some other things with regards to these tables. Um, the cool thing is, once you're standing there in front of the table, you can look to the side, you can see the whole cabinet art. You can, mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Stern and uh, Zen, you can get really close to the play field. Um, you can walk around to the side of the cabinet, look back at where the ball would drain, <laughs> really low to the to the play field it allows you to do that Zacharia mm -hmm. every single time I tried to get close to the table it would jump away it would never let me like get right up on top of it yeah it's a different experience for me as you'll see okay um okay so here we go oh this is just I wanted to just show this real quick in Zen they actually bothered to model the bottom of the play field yeah if you so did that it, thing. yeah if you did that exact same thing with Stern, you're going to see the underside of the full video playfield. Yeah, it's basically the flip of, of the playfield. There's no bottom. No bottom. At all. No bottom. Completely fake. And you think you see it on one of the tables when it gets sucked up into the room. I think it's Mustang, actually. It gets sucked up, and you can see the Corvette model just... <laughs> In the mid-center of the table, just there. It's shortcuts, what can you say? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we don't need any polygons there. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, let me see what else I uh, put here. Oh, okay. So now. Here I go. Here, Jared's going to show some clipping here. Woo, getting a little too close. Now, I'm going to pause that right there. Hold on, let me pause it with it brightly lit. There we go. So, I'm going to pause that there just to say, although there is clipping, and although that uh, if you tried to get too close to the table, it would do that to you. I do want you guys to look at those inserts. Those inserts mm. are beautiful. They actually modeled, it seems, <laughs> the plastics yep. and the light that would shine through the plastics. Why am I saying that? I don't have the uh, illustration of it. But the reason why I'm pointing that out, on Stern VR, it all just looks like stickers. It's just flat. It's flat. There's no definition. And there's a, it's basically a sticker that is not lit and a sticker that is lit. And mm. that's they, the they've difference. They've changed the lighting. They've just flipped yeah. the pattern yeah. on the sticker. And where it's really obvious, uh, again, like I said, I was able to get right up there to the table and, and look around at everything. The, on the Sterns, a lot of them have this big old plastic flasher. Right? Yeah. It's a cylinder. Big you, barrel flasher. You yeah. get up, you look at that thing. It's nothing but a texture graphic. That's it. It's it, not round. No, it's this flat image. But I mean, but a, I mean, there's no, there's no ridges. Way. There's no ridges in it. Um, there's no, none of those cuts that would be in the actual plastic. It's just a cylinder with a graphic sticker on it. Yeah, and that is the way it. it is on everything. Yeah. All your insert lights are nothing but sticker play field. It, it, brings you out of it really quickly, um, especially when comparing to Zacharia and what they did. Now, yeah. trying to compare that with what Zen did, well, unfortunately, because none of the Williams tables are available on VR, Zen never really does this kind of insert. No, they don't do star inserts in no. the game. So at least at least not in the very early ones. They right. may have started doing it in things like aliens, etc. But Yeah. So it's really difficult to tell uh how they modeled theirs. But again, if you get look close, it does appear that light it doesn't look like just a play a flat sticker that alternates. It does no, the appear lens light does is... actually look like it's yeah. it's got like a hot spot in it and it's got like, you know, a clear diffraction of light going through it. Yeah. Um but I just don't think they've they've gone and molded the um the the actual facets in the the lenses. And I mean you may be saying to yourself, who cares? Nobody yeah. plays pinball <laughs> with their head up against the play field. But I would argue, how many times have you gone up to a real machine and hovered over the glass and had a yeah. really close look at what all the inserts say so that you know mm -hmm. what to shoot? All this the time. is giving you that opportunity to be able to do that. And unfortunately, as soon as you do that, you realize how many shortcuts were taken by Farsight. Yeah. And it's quite awful. In the case of Zachariah, it's just they didn't model their clipping. Um, like I said, Jared's able to do what I'm not able to do on mine. On mine, if I get that close, the play field jumps away. I can't go through yeah. it. So, yeah. Uh, let me continue on with this. 
Not sure what else I want to show here. It's Other just showing how how crisp all the textures are on it. Like, yeah, I everything mean, it is, is really cool to really be able to nice. see all the habit rails, um, you know, standing up in the air, basically. Off oh, I there's go. that video. <laughs> there's there's you, that menu. I'm waving around that menu with <laughs> with uh, with little <laughs> little cares. Yep. Um, <laughs> you can actually hide that menu for the record too. You press like the Y button on the left controller, oh, okay. and it just disappears the menu. So it's not waving around in your face all the time. Because if you don't, it'll clip through the play field as you're playing it, okay. um, depending on your hand position. So yeah. All right. You, so what do we say? Yeah. What do we? Why don't we get into a little bit of gameplay video then? Hmm. Let's, I think that's what I have lined up next. Yep. So here's Jared playing a little bit of Mars. Yep. Um, so this is Oculus Quest 2 yeah. um, footage. Um, I did, for the record, record the PC version, uh, which we'll see in a bit. Yep. Um, but it's uh, like a lot. It was hard to get good quality frame rate on. Yeah. Uh, as you see, look at, look at that <laughs> menu coming through there. It's great. No, I told Jared to check out Robot because honestly, in 3D, this it's table is—I don't understand how you would play it in 2D because it's got three different levels on it. Yeah. Um, so, th this is what it, well, essentially, what you're seeing now is what it looks like in 2D. Yeah. In 3D, it has just got such definition between those three play fields, and with the virtue of VR, you can actually get in there and look at the different levels and get down low and see where all the entries and exits are yeah. and and just makes a huge difference to comprehension on some of these really detailed tables. Like it's night and day compared to the two D experience. So let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit. Um, mm. I, I can show you I can I can show you the stern. It basically looks the same as all these. All of these in three D are pretty awesome. There's no they, they are great. Yeah, yep. it is a night and day difference. Um, in terms of you being able to spatially understand what the actual layout is. I, I mean, the worst of your experience with these is still going to be you going, ooh, compared to if you were just used to playing again on your TV. Um, yeah. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about that. So how do I compare it, though, when I play these in 3D on my TV? Hmm. Well, for Zen, I basically found that if I went into view five, that's about as close of approximation as I could make it to what it felt like playing in VR. Um, and that was with me playing in 3D. Because um, okay. it gave me a, a, a good perspective, wide. It didn't have a terribly large amount of movement. And what I was noticing with me playing in 3D was I was doing a lot of head movement as opposed to when I'm playing in T 2D and it's just my eyes that are doing the movement. Yeah. So it did a fair approximation of that. Um, but the ability to lean in is the difference between the two. So points to the 3D version of Zen 2 in terms of graphical fidelity and not having a screen door and being absolutely super duper crisp. Yeah. More points though for the VR experience because it just you're not fooled. Natural. I mean, or you, excuse me, yeah. you are fooled. You immediately just, you feel, and the second you try doing a walk around of the cabinet, that's when you really truly feel fooled because you go to, like if you're leaning low, you actually put your hand up to put your hand on the cabinet and just goes through nothing. It falls through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. This, this isn't yes. real, but it's pretty real. <laughs> Which is why yeah. having the pin sim is vital because what I would do is I would leave one hand on that and then start to do my cabinet walk. So I always had a sense of where I was um, yeah. without falling over. <laughs> the, right. the other thing to note is that Farsight took even more shortcuts in that than they did with Stern VR. And when I say shortcuts, painful shortcuts. The mm. 3D for Zen, you turn it in 3D, you put on your glasses, you go, yeah, I'm playing in 3D. You do the same thing with Pinball Arcade in 3D, and everything's still blurry. And you literally have to do that magic eye deep focus in order oh, to... Oh, like, 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 oh, wow. They you put have to their, like they put their convergence too far away. 
it was so far away that you still have to cross your eyes a little bit in order to get it to go. Once you've got your eyes doing the deep focus, you're fine, but it's that extra little bit of eye strain right off the bat. The other thing that they did, which is, I don't even know why. So they float the DMD, and both of the, them do this. They float the DMD towards the front, which is mm. stupid to me. Put it towards the back. But they float towards the front. But Farsight only put it in one eye. So it's not even 3D. So if I close my right eye, I can still see the menu or the DMD. If I close my left eye, DMD is gone. <laughs> so it's not even in 3D. It's just there. And there is various menu items throughout the program that were that way. It's like, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> That's just That's absurd. Bad. It's really bad. Um, the other thing that I would point out is that with Stern VR, Jared made mention earlier about textures and mm. whether it's the software or the hardware that's causing you to not be able to get them in focus. Uh, in Stern VR, they use a lot of low-res textures, folks. They really did. And wow. the farther you get to the back of the play field, the more low-res textures that they used. Yep. So if you're looking at the ACDC table with the jukebox names on the back, they will not come into focus. <laughs> when you zoom, when you lean in, they yeah. will be blurred. Because so. they didn't use high res. You look at the apron card, it's a blurry mess. Um, mm. You know, for your, I, there's a lot of that. Um, when you take a walk around and you start looking at things from the backside, they're not fully modeled. Um, mm. to the point that if you look down the ball drain, you just see space. It's a black. And it's just a black pit. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Zen actually you modeled do. what goes on in there. Yeah, there's actually like a, a, a trough yeah. that the balls fall into when you can actually watch them fall in there as well. Another it's, area uh, that and there. both Zen and Zachariah did this, the back boxes, they modeled three-dimensionally. Hmm. Farsight didn't bother doing that. On their old tables. I no. checked out On a the couple. Ones. There was the only one that I saw that was actually 3D, and you can correct me, but uh, the only one that I saw was Starship Troopers. It actually had the curve, and there was some dimensionality to it. But I checked out Mustang and Star Trek and uh, Frankenstein and what else? To, oh, Ripley's. All of them completely flat, like it's a poster. Again, like see, the I never sticker. I didn't walk around the cabinet. Okay. Um, so I didn't see it, but on the from the front, it looks like they're three D modeled. Like they have looks like they have dimension to them. Now compare that to, like I said, Zachariah actually put some dimension to their back box. Not a lot, but some. I was looking at Castle Storm with uh, in Zen, and I looked at the speaker. And not only is the speaker grill 3D, but you can see depth into it to the actual speaker. Well, wow. okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Again, that's some three-dimensional modeling going on right there. That's some extra detail that yes. they didn't need to do, but they did it because you can do it and you should. And again, I think this all comes down to when people ask, well, how come there's so few tables in Zen VR? And I think this is where you're starting to get into the reasons why. Because they are not just slapping them up there and saying, yeah, great, go, have fun. They're modeling the entire thing. They're very aware of the VR experience. And like we keep on saying, the better the VR that you're experiencing in the room, the longer that you're willing to stay in there because your body is not constant. Your brain is not Fuck constantly it. fighting it. Yeah. Mm. Um, whereas with these other two, your brain is fighting it a lot. And yeah. not comfortable, you know, being in there. 